Hello and welcome to another episode of TV on TV. I'm State Representative Tommy Vitolo. You're watching Brookline Interactive Group, and we have got a great show for you. It's like a two for Thursday because we have not one but two guests from the Puppet Showplace Theater. We have Hannah Swartz and Leslie Burton, and we're going to talk all things puppets. But before we do, of course, the news. The United States and its allies continue to supply Ukraine with weapons and advanced equipment as Russia poured into the country. Although this has improved Ukrainian defenses, President Biden said we may now expect a wider assault from Russia. The Education Department of the Biden administration announced its intent to give people a better chance for debt cancellation for their student loans. The department said that additional credit toward loan forgiveness will be granted to federal student loan borrowers. Following a Florida judge's ruling, the Biden administration lifted the mask mandate on public transportation. In Massachusetts, masks are no longer required on the MBTA or regional transit authorities or at Logan International Airport. COVID-19 cases in Massachusetts rose 156% in the past week, with the total number of breakthrough infections reaching 10,624. The Massachusetts House of Representatives released its fiscal 23 budget last week. The initial budget includes investments in equity and justice related programs, funding for education from early childhood to higher ed and environmental protections. The Brookline Select Board has begun the search for a new town administrator. They anticipate offering the position to a candidate by July. So if you're interested, apply today. On Monday, the Boston Marathon returned during its regular season, Patriots Day. Congratulations to everyone who ran, including the 108 Brookline residents who completed the race. And so look, uh, you're watching Brookline Interactive Group. It's Thursday, April 21st, and you're not really here for the news. You're here for the puppets, or at least for the people behind the puppets. And so without further ado, we are going to introduce uh, our two guests. Again, Leslie Burton and Hannah Swartz from the Puppet Showplace Theater. Leslie and Hannah, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. So you're both new. The Puppet Showplace has been around for a while. Let's start with the two of you. Tell us your roles, um, your newness, and what you're bringing to the Puppet Showplace Theater, your spin on things. Well, um, so my name is Leslie, and I am the new artistic director since last July, just about, which means that I am in charge of all things puppetry. Uh, getting puppet shows on the stage, interacting with artists, talking with people in the community about what they'd like to see on the stage, and also in charge of education programs, um, which range from um, residencies in schools, so there's puppetry classes, art classes, and creation and performance classes, and then other things like adult education where we we teach more skills to professional puppeteers. You can always upskill in all things, including puppetry. And, um, and also in particular, our creative residency for black puppeteers, which we just, just kicked off the third round of um, last week, which we're really excited about. And I'm Hannah. I'm the managing director here at Puppet Show Place Theater. And I started last May. Um, so I'm nearing my one year anniversary. And I take care of all things operations, finance, fundraising, um, facilities, HR, all the nuts and bolts behind the scenes to support the great creative artistry that goes on here. And uh, which doesn't mean you won't find me once in a while on the stage, um, but uh, I'm mostly behind the curtain. So someone's got to count the beans, I suppose. So you're both new to Puppet Showplace Theater, but Puppet Showplace Theater has been around for almost 50 years. Can you give us just a little bit of history of the theater and uh, some sense on, on where it's been? That's right. So we will be 48 years in early June. The theater was founded by Mary Churchill, who was a Brooklynite herself and um, was a feminist puppeteer. Educator. Educator and- Artist. Artist. Extraordinaire. And she founded the theater in this very location, although right next door um, in what is now the salon. Um, and she and her partner, um, Paul Vincent Davis, 
were the heart and soul behind this creation? Sure. Yeah. Paul Vincent Davis, um, her partner for many, many years, became the resident artist and also the artistic director of the theater for many more years. Um, at one stage, he was the executive director and the artistic director and the resident artist. So his work really populated the theater for years and years. Um, and we still have a lot of puppets of his. Um, for example, if I may already bring out this beautiful puppet. This is one of Paul Vincent Davis's puppets. Um, and we have a lot of a lot of them on display. Um, they're not in productions anymore because they're old and beautiful and we want to keep them in as good a condition as we possibly can. But this is uh, this is the beast from his Beauty and the Beast, which won a Unimo award, the Union Internationale de la Marionette, which is my broken French. It's just the International Puppetry Union. Um, so yeah, Paul Vincent Davis was very lauded in his time as artistic resident and director. Um, and we, yeah, we still have lots of, lots of his, lots of his puppets and pieces of his creations all over the theater. So, you know, the first 40, Six years of the Puppet Show Police Theater were relatively pandemic free, uh, but more recently, uh, you know, the the performing arts suffered tremendously during COVID. And uh, as a member of the Joint Committee on Tourism, Arts and Cultural Development, um, I felt that uh, very clearly secondhand uh, through the legislature. But but you all faced it firsthand. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you how you limped along to today, how you managed to stay open um, in light of all of the tremendous challenges of COVID? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, the arts have suffered across the board and I think performing arts in particular have really had to experiment and pivot and change and um, try new things. We feel so fortunate to our, our patrons and our donors and our, our loyal 48 years of loyal community members who have kept us alive through all of this time. Um, we did close in mid-March of 2020 um, and our doors remained largely closed for 19 months. Um, that said, I, I was living in New York at the time and um, watching from afar what was happening here at Puppet Show Place. And I was incredibly impressed with how quickly they pivoted to online um, programming. I think Puppet Show Place Theater more than anything has always been dedicated to um, providing work and opportunities for its artists. Um, we, you know, whether it's through our incubator programs, our residencies, our touring shows, um, or our main stage, it's, it's always, you know, artists first. And um, with the closure of theater, it meant that overnight, all of our artists had, you know, zero opportunity and zero income, um, particularly with schools closing. A lot of our artists are teaching artists who are in classrooms, um, working with kids, and all of those opportunities basically dried up overnight. So, the theater, you know, really came together over Zoom and said, what can we do? What opportunities can we do to connect, you know, bring theater to our community who are craving, you know, opportunity and performance and interaction um, and created some online programs, um, began filming from home um, and, you know, not to the scale that we have in normal times, but certainly creating some opportunities. Um, later on in the pandemic, we were able to host some small group classes in this space, um, bringing, you know, small groups of, of brave folks together um, to engage directly with the art of making in a safe environment. Um, and after the death of George Floyd, and again, right at the beginning after our closure in March, um, there was also a lot of conversations that happened immediately about what we would do to, you know, support um, support our Black puppeteers and create um, a space um, and opportunity for them. And within a week of George Floyd's death, they launched the Creative Residency for Black Puppeteers um, with a thousand dollar grant to individual artists and an alliance group to meet online, um, to have conversations and um, make art together. And I think that's one of the one of the best things to come out of the pandemic as 
as far as as far as our art form is concerned um the i mean the creative residency itself has been really wonderful and the artists have gotten so much out of being able to meet and just have that affinity um <clears throat> but also in a wider more global sense the connectivity of zoom and of being just having everything transfer to the digital world it's it's not ideal i think most of us would agree but it does make connecting possible in a way that it hasn't ever really been and made it much more um accessible and mainstream is the word that's coming to mind it's just the the go-to way uh of connecting with people now in a way that it certainly wasn't before um not that not that live art um is not still incredibly important because it is and it's a totally different form really i think that's one of the discoveries just how different the the live can be from the digital but um but it has been really great for educational opportunities and networking um particularly in smaller more niche fields like puppetry um it's yeah. allowed for national conversation yeah. and even you know international conversation there's a international puppetry day every year um and march 20th <laughs> and Puppet Show Place has been able to really celebrate that and celebrate that in a, in a global way with performances happening around the world um, and audiences gathering from around the world for that, which is something we couldn't have done in person here um, in the theater. So it sounds like uh, as, you, as you slogged through COVID and made it to the end, no puppet tears were shed. Um, I, I couldn't, I couldn't help it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but I want to talk about uh, what's coming, right? And uh, what folks can expect uh, from down on Station Street. Can we start by talking about what some of the productions uh, are that folks can come see right now for, for all ages, uh, I, I presume? Well, yes, we can. How about that? So this is a postcard that we've mailed out to everybody on our mailing list. If you're not on our mailing list, make sure you get on our mailing list. Um, and we send these out for each series that we do. We do show a series of about six shows per section. Um, and we have coming up a world premiere of a Jim Henson Foundation funded family show called Big Broken Business by Modern Times Theater that we'll be very excited to welcome into the theater this Friday. So tomorrow um, and for the weekend. So that's the first thing on the docket and then the following weekend, we have a show called I Spy Butterfly, which is particularly excellent for the sort of two to three plus range. So for the, the smaller audiences. Um, and that was developed here, that show uh, by Cozy Arts. Um, there's a whole series of, of shows that take place in a neighborhood called Cozy Corner. And they come here and we have Cozy Corner on the stage periodically um, in the rotation of shows that come through. Um, following that, the weekend of Mother's Day, we have a show called I Love Tacos, which has some Mexican folk tales in it by Paper Heart Puppets. And that um, is spearheaded by uh, a puppeteer named Brad Schur, who was the resident artist here for, I think, about eight years. Um, so we're very glad to welcome him back into Brookline. And there'll be a workshop here, which folks can sign up for and make their very own Taco Monster puppet. Yes, I'm very excited about the Taco Monsters. That's happening on May 7th. Be there, be square. The following weekend, May 14th and 15th, we have a show called Everybody Loves Pirates, which I think speaks for itself because everybody does. Hi. Um, yeah. Hi. Exactly, I yeah, know we're really excited to welcome Frogtown Mountain Puppeteers coming from Maine. And then um, at the end, or not the end of May, but in the 21st, 22nd, we have A Woodland Cinderella, which is an award-winning show by Deborah Costine Nature Puppets, who, uh, I mean, most of these, these artists haven't been here in two years. So it's really wonderful and exciting to welcome back people that have been coming to this theater to perform for, I mean, some, in some cases, decades. Um, so that's sort of been the first goal of reopening at this stage is to bring back artists that have been really close to the theater over the years and to, partially to introduce ourselves and say, hello, here's the new team and welcome back and we're still here for you. Um, and we're still here for the audiences. So we're really excited to welcome audiences and artists and everyone who wants to come down to see a puppet show. And, and on June 4th, 
Oh, yes. <laughs> You've got us plugging our um, exciting upcoming programs. On June 4th, we're going to have our very own Puppet Show Place birthday party event, which will be a few hours, a full afternoon of free outdoor puppetry in Emerson Garden in Brookline um, with all kinds of fun and festivities. Yeah, there'll be giant puppets and there'll be workshops and there'll be shows and there'll be performances that aren't fully, fully shows, but close to shows. Um, yeah, making things and having just a, a laugh together for our birthday. And so are the audiences coming back? You're, you've got shows or are people coming? Yes. Yes, they are. And it's really wonderful to see and to meet people. We've had, I think, I mean, oh, I don't want to give a number that's not true, but we've had like many sold out shows so far since reopening, especially in this calendar year, as people are getting a little bit more comfortable and coming out more. Um, when we reopened initially, we were at half capacities to make sure that everybody felt safe um, and were safe with social distancing and masks. We're still, um, we're still requiring masks in the theater just because our main our main audience, our main target audience much of the time is um, under five. So they're not yet able to be vaccinated. And so we are still asking people to mask in this space. It's a, it's a, it's a small but mighty space, but we're trying to be mindful of each other. Um, but yeah, people have been coming back. So we've, we've actually managed to expand our capacity a little bit. We're allowing about 60 people in and we're checking with the audience periodically just to make sure that everybody still feels comfortable and like it's not too squished. And we're doing really well so far. And it's, yeah, it's really great. Some people come back every single weekend. That's great. And, and shows are not all that you do, right? You're not just um, putting on these performances there's a lot more opportunities to engage with residents of all ages. Tell us about some of the educational programming that you offer. Well, right now um, we're gearing up to offer an, our first in-person, no, our second in-person adult class um, since we reopened. And this will be taught by Veronica Barron, who is a great friend of the theater and an awesome teaching artist. Um, and it's a shadow lab for specifically for people who have worked with puppetry to some extent in the past, but not necessarily a lot, but to have some familiarity with shadow puppetry would be very helpful in this particular one. Um, that's coming up starting May 11th. It'll be five weeks. Um, that's going to be really exciting. I'm going to take it. And then uh, over the summer, we'll have a virtual class, which is again, one of these, one of these sort of silver linings from COVID, just being able to offer virtual classes, having sort of figured out the procedures to do so and then being able to reach people all over the country all over the world I suppose really we wouldn't have any any reason not to um and that will be a like a creation of a piece like a full small I think it's about six weeks so it would have to be a small piece but a complete piece with our former resident artist Brad Shore um so that's the yeah the adult programming we also have we have just to translate you just said you're gonna have a class where you're gonna help people design, create, and build their own puppet. Yep. Now, you use very artsy words for that, but I, you know, I just, I'm a regular person. So you're talking <laughs> like mega puppet class, which sounds okay. awesome, by the way. Yeah. How do you build it? How do you use it? What How do you, do you perform move it? it? Yeah. What voices do you use? How do you use your body? How do you create a piece, a little short piece with a beginning, middle, and end? Very important to have all three. It's going to be great. I love it. And there's also, there'll be more opportunities for kids. Uh, we have our Kids Puppet Studio, which is a half day program for youngsters. Um, that'll be happening in August. Um, we also have a puppet adventure program that is amazing and it's a day long, um, but there's no space left currently, which is, you know, it's, it's good and bad, both. Um, but there's, yeah, there does seem to be um, some good demand for, for puppetry classes, which is really encouraging as we're coming into this, these roles. And, you know, it's, um, you do other stuff at the theater too, right? I know because I am the proud owner of a seven-year-old as well as an 11-year-old. And <laughs> so we wander down Station Street on the weekends once in a while uh, for parties. Uh, so tell us about some of those opportunities, both for people looking to throw them and for people looking to make friends with people who might throw them. Uh, yeah, you know, so- I figure out so which kinds of friends you want <laughs> to get invited to all the coolest puppet showplace theater parties. Pretty cool. Tell us about that a little bit. So we reserve our mornings for private 
birthday party rentals. I, I guess it doesn't have to be a birthday, but it usually is. Um, so you can book a private show. Um, typically it's whatever show is on that week. So it's, um, you know, not the same thing every time. It's whomever is coming through town um, for our main stage program and you get a full theater experience and then you get a lobby takeover. Um, you get to bring in your own food, cake, decorations, whatever you choose. Um, sometimes we can provide extra workshops and puppet making um, or other, you know, fun activities in the space. And that's one of our offerings. We also have touring shows. So you can book a, a performance to come out to you or a workshop. So whether you run a community center or you want a birthday party in your backyard um, or you have a permit to do a party in a park in Brookline, um, we can send a puppet show to you and um, you know choose something or offer something that's particularly good for your age group and uh, your kids whether they like pirates or cinderella or butterflies whatever appeals to them um lots of circuses lots of circuses lots of circus options monsters yes. monsters monkeys socks. yes socks many, um, many circuses. and then we also do have our our residency program so um we have schools who coordinate with us in advance and raise some funds and have continuous workshops for be that, you know, a week long workshop or a semester long or a year long workshop of puppetry classes in the classroom. That's one of our, our favorite things to do where we know that we're really building a, a repertoire and an experience with kids over time and really making a transformative difference in how they think about storytelling, think about art making, think about language, linguistics, um, and uh, creativity in general. So I, I noticed that the, all of the offerings that you, that you mentioned in terms of shows are, you know, four and up, three and up, five and up. You got any audience for like a 18 and up show or at least like a 14 and up show we want some you know something a little more edgy what um anything coming up well, tell us a little bit about that and what you know i i will tell you that uh on my anniversary my wife and i were in italy and we saw in italian um a marionette puppet show that was clearly um adult themed we didn't understand a word of it but we had a great time anyway um so surely there's uh content for um for something above and beyond maybe pirates and, and circuses. Tell us a little bit about that. Coming up on May 13th, Friday, mark your calendar. Motto a Monologue by the Perry Alley Theater, which is a theater that's been through the puppet show place many times. And in fact, the premiere of that show was here 13 years ago and it hasn't been back since. So we'll be really excited to welcome that show back. It's a series of vignettes. It's very literary. It's a whole bunch of different characters, all, all performed by one master puppeteer, Andrew Perry Alley. Um, so we're really excited to see that and what what all kinds of interesting things it will hold. It's a, it's a very multifaceted show. So it's a little drama, a little comedy, a little tragedy. Um, many different stories all rolled into one delightful evening. I can't wait. Then we're also going to have um, a slam and a slam is like a, uh, it's a little bit like an, it's like an open mic, but all of the pieces are pre-selected. So it's not like an open mic at all. Poetry um, slam. Yeah, like a poetry slam, more like a poetry slam. Um, that is where the word comes from after all. <laughs> uh, so that's a series of short, of short pieces um, that are typically more, adult themed, um, the way that we have them uh, in this theater, experiments, ideas, just thoughts that can't get out of someone's head that they need to perform on the stage, all of these things are, are welcome. And so it's a space for new work and experimental work and also silly and maybe a little bit more raunchy work because puppets can do everything. Um, and that'll be on June 18th and this, uh, this summer's slam. It'll be our first live and in-person slam in the theater since, since Hannah and I started and since I think about a year before that. Yeah. Um, so that's super exciting and we really, really delighted. Especially fun for teenagers, I will say. Mm -hmm. I, I brought some 14 and 16 year old friends to a, a pup. This is part of our umbrella of Puppets at Night, um, which is our adult programming. Um, and I will say that the, the teenagers were the best audience members that night and they really, um, you know, thought 
about where these stories came from and what they meant and what were these artists thinking and doing and presenting and how were the puppets working and how did things happen? And um, it was really cool to see the kids' brains, you know, figuring out the pieces and um, thinking about, you know, what it all meant. And a, a slam is a really great introduction to puppetry, especially for people who are a little bit older, because it gives it, any any given slam will have an awful lot of different styles. So there's sculptors and dancers and poets and performance artists and all different kinds of people that come to puppetry and experiment with different possibilities. So that's yeah, if you're if you're puppetry curious, it's a great place to come find out some more. Now, Leslie. Uh... I studied financial and industrial mathematics in Ireland, and you studied puppetry in Ireland. And I'm willing to bet that our viewers would rather hear about your experience than mine. <laughs> so maybe you could tell us a little bit about, about what the heck you were doing in Ireland um, with puppets. Tell us about that. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I was always I was always the puppetry person, but when I when I went to Ireland for for grad school and I started learning more about the puppetry scene in Southern Ireland, I learned that there was not yet a puppetry festival, or there hadn't been for some years. There used to be one in Dublin, but I studied in Cork. Cork is the southernmost part of Ireland, and it's uh... at, at UCD. No, no, Cork UCD oh, is sorry. Dublin. No, I'm no sorry. UCC University College UCC. Cork. Got to represent red the court color red and white um, yeah it's a great it's a great city it's one of the greatest cities in the world cork um you should go everyone should go um the true capital yeah. as they say yeah yes they do say yes and it is yes the true capital um yeah no it's a it's a wonderful place and it's just a really it's a really lovely city with a lot of really awesome local art and i became involved with a company that doesn't doesn't exist anymore. It's morphed into some other branches, but it was called Doucha Puppets. And one of their major initiatives was starting the Cork Puppetry Festival, um, which, yeah, it was the only, the only festival in Ireland, the only puppetry festival in Ireland for uh, quite a few years. Um, so that was really exciting to be part of that on the ground floor. And then eventually as a performer, <clears throat> and then helping to um, organize and plan subsequent festivals and then being the assistant director in its fifth year. Um, so bringing shows from all over Europe and sharing them with everybody. And one thing that was really interesting since we were talking about adult puppetry is that in the fifth year, we had less adult programming because there, it was a, it was a shorter festival. So we had more shows for kids. And the, the biggest piece of feedback we got was that the adults wanted more just for them. So that was, that was really interesting. interesting. Yeah, it was cool. Well, you know, um, you're pushing on 50 years. We know you're going to get there and then some, and uh, we're delighted to all be a part of it. Uh, Puppetshowplace.org is the website. Folks can go see what's coming. They can figure out how they can spend some of their money supporting local arts and local artists, which is something that's really important. We have to keep reminding folks, uh, people got to pay rent, people got to buy supplies, and it's not just uh, the person with their hand in the puppet or on the puppet, right? It's folks like Hannah who've got to run the show and folks who are taking the tickets and folks who are keeping the place running. Uh, all of that's important. And so uh, if you're anything like me, you got to go out and support the arts, all kinds of arts, including the arts right here in Brookline, like the Puppet Showplace Theater. Hannah, Leslie, any final words? We've got just a minute left. I mean, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's been supporting the theater throughout all this time, especially through the closure. And it's totally dependent on the community that we're in. And we're so happy to be here serving this community. That's what I wanted to say. Check out our website, see what's coming up. We're going to have some outdoor free shows over the course of the summer, as well as in our sweet brick walled theater indoors. So we look forward to meeting you and um, come visit. have a great spring and summer. Leslie, Hannah, thanks so much for being on TV, on TV here on Brookline Interactive Group. Uh, folks, you'll see us every Thursday at 2.30 to 3 o'clock. And uh, next week, we may even give a preview of the May 3rd election night results show. Uh, so tune in next week for that. Until then, uh, we'll see you out on the streets. And thanks for watching.
that's one.